main thing I want to talk about, bro, is just alternatives. You know, cause cause here in this area, really in this state, but in this in this area, when I say this area, I mean this region, the western part of North Carolina. You know, we've had things done a traditional way. You know, but it's time now because we, we have a demand for us to get more innovative. Like everybody sees the importance of bringing different people to the table. You know, I ain't talking about just bringing different people to the table so we can have a good lunch. But, but bring different people to the table so that we can bring our expertise from our respect, respective areas and then collaborate and innovate. Not just to come chill and, and say hi and bye and catch up, but like how can we sit down, put our heads together and innovate? Because that's what it's going to take. And that rhyme, they have a rhyme. We got to innovate. That's what it's going to take. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, when I think about innovation, I think of us utilizing the people with lived experience in positions more often. Because when you use passports, you use people that have been in those people's shoes. And that modifies the level of accountability. You know, we can have conversations with them that's difficult for the traditional workers to have. You know, and it's no shade to them. You know, they have their, their education and their trainings that they bring to the table. But, but we bring a different level of expertise. We bring our lived experience. We've been in their shoes, and that changes the conversation. It changes the dialogue. One time I had... Uh, I had a, a, a clinician be on me. They said something to me, and it was funny, but it was educational for the both of us. And that clinician was passionate about the cause, so that clinician didn't see me as competition. But that clinician see me as a supplement to what they was offering. But he say, he's like, man, I've been working with him for, for, for two years now, and I didn't know that. And I said, that's because I'm a peer support specialist. We connect with each other on a different level. The trust is there. The establishment of rapport is different. You know what I'm saying? And we got to go towards the alternative. You know, it's been victims of the opportunity gap. Victims of the, I've been a victim of the opportunity gap. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not just here complaining, but I'm trying to bring solutions to the table. Let's sit down and talk about how we can best use our community champions, our recovery champions, our recovery warriors. How can we best use them in uh, 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 models that haven't traditionally, traditionally used them? You feel me? Let's bring it to the workforce. Let's bring it to criminal justice. Let's bring it in those places. Let's, let's lean more towards the forensic peer support. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't re-enter society. I know what it's like. I know what it was like when I first got out, how nervous I was, how how my self-esteem had been impacted because I had been living not as Philip Cooper, but as 0765193. You know what I'm saying? And when I got out, I was I was intimidated by everything. And ain't nobody know that I had to keep that bottle inside. I was traumatized. Bring alternatives to the table so we can have a have a larger impact on our community. And as you may or may not know, see, we keep up with this stuff. I live this. I'm passionate about this. My wife had to make me stop working, yo. I love this. I love building people up. I don't know how to build a deck, but I know how to build a man. You feel me? Iron sharp as iron. But I just got an article the other day. I seen Donald Trump from the first step. And that's one thing that I salute Donald Trump for, you feel me? Because he is about second chances. I mean, it's a good business move if you look about it. If you look about how much it's costing to, to incarcerate an individual, how much it's costing as opposed to them contributing. Man, that's an impact on not just workforce development, not just public safety, but I'm talking about the growth, the growth, gross domestic product. <laughs> Because then we going from spending on them to them contributing tax dollars. You know what I'm saying? But Donald Trump just let out 3,100 people. He's about to let out 3,100 people from the, from the First Step Act. And when those people get out, they're going to need people who are passionate about the cause, people who are connected in the community, people who have authentic relationships to where these individuals don't have to be victims of the opportunity gap. I'll give you an example. A young brother just got out not too long ago. He shall remain nameless because there's no release signed. He got out. He came to me. My caseload's full. But my heart goes out to especially, no, it's not a race thing, but we all know about racial disparities in this area. And with a lot of employers, it's easier for them to hire people that look like them than it is to hire people like us. You know what I'm saying? But this dude coming to my office, uh, and, and, he, and he say, man, I really need your help. You know, and I want to tell him my caseload's full. My hands are tied. But he immediately went to telling me his story. And this is the power of the story. He started telling me how he's been out since the end of May. And he's been looking for a job and couldn't find nothing. He was telling me how child support was like, let me get that. He was telling me how probation was like, where are is that? He was telling me how the, children, the, the, the mother of his children was like, I need some. And when he said it, I could remember what it felt like 
That's the power of peer support. I remember what it felt like. So at that point in time, my caseload was full, but I'm not leaving you by yourself to handle this, my brother. I can't. I'm obligated. I'm ob God did not redeem me and put me in this position so that I would get stagnant. So I said, look, this is what we're going to do. I sent him to a company that I knew was a second chance employer. When they got him, they was willing to work with him, but they sent him to a staffing agency first. The staffing agency they sent him to tried to pay him $10 an hour. I said, not on my, rock, not on my watch. I'm very familiar with what it takes to live in Asheville, the cost. That's what you get when you work with peer supports. I got friends who are halfway house owners, friends, you feel me? So I know how much it costs, so I wouldn't send him to somewhere making $10 an hour. I called another employer instead, since that employer right there tried to, tried to pull that. I called my people at No Evil Foods. Shout out to No Evil Foods, local entrepreneurs, my people, second chance employers. I love the shirt. I might wear the shirt tomorrow to work.